Once again, give us a hand, yeah, for the basement of Baron Morbid. I am always, this is your host, Baron Morbid, sidekick Jacques. Jacques is hiding his patented Baron Morbid hypno goggles underneath his, his thugonomics hat. What kind of hat is that, Jacques? Dragon hat. Dragon hat. All right, did, did you notice anything new about me? You bald. Spring is in the air, and so is all my hair. <laughs> Tonight. Oh, yeah, there's a good chance. It's supposed to be like 31 degrees tonight. 31 degrees here oh, in the oh, Kalamazoo oh, area. Oh, News at 5. Oh, wait, this is five. my microphone. No, this is more like a microphone. No, News at 5. You have to leave that next to the foot so the foot will grow. Grow, foot, grow. It's not going to grow. Anyways, movie tonight. <laughs> Robot versus the Aztec mummy, because because everybody knows. Everybody knows. You're gonna stop that now, right? Well, there's a microphone. Yes, I understand. Okay. If you're gonna fight a mummy, what do you need? Um, uh, undead killer. A robot. You build a robot to kill the mummy. No. That's the that's how this game. This is how this one works. Robot versus the Aztec Mummy. One of three of the Aztec Mummy series. Wow. There's Wrestling Women versus the Aztec Mummy, and then, I think... They must all suck. Aztec Mummy on the Cosby Show. I don't know what the third one is. I have no idea what the third one is. On the, the Cosby one. Show. On the Cosby Show with Joe Putin. That sound good? Sound like Bill Cosby? No. No? No, no, no. Actually, uh, no, yeah. So I'm going to have you go off and watch the first part. We're going to uh, come back and show you our, our defense line against mummies. Jacques will activate him, and camera person Dandy will zoom in on him so we'll get a better look at him. So for now, though, robot mummy. Robot mummy. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Eh. I am a mummy. Me, 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 me. Wouldn't it be a cyborg mummy, then? Because mummies are dead people. And well, it's going to be a robot wrapped in bandages. <laughs> Anyways. penetrate the mysteries of the great beyond. Who knows? This picture is based upon an extraordinary experiment carried out by Drs. Hughes and Tooney of the University of Los Angeles. There is no doubt as to its authenticity. Testimony of people participating in the experiment sworn to by a notary public preclude the possibility of any fraud. This picture is a combination of factual data mixed with fiction.
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Dr. Diaz, Dr. Esther, what a pleasure to have you here. The pleasure is all ours. I hope you're feeling well. Very well, thank you. And you? The same old laborers, always working. Trying to find new ways to help patients die painlessly. Please don't choke. But won't you come in? My husband is in there waiting for you. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm most grateful to you for having taken the trouble to come to my home this evening. It's no trouble, Doctor. We're delighted. Who would complain at having the opportunity of visiting with such a beautiful young lady as your wife, Flora? Flatterer. How are you, Pinky? Fine, Doctor. Please sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. Dr. Diaz, Dr. Esther, I've taken the liberty of calling you here because I think it's time I revealed something very serious. Let's hear it, then. It's about the Aztec breastplate and the bracelet, gentlemen. How's that? Why, the whole thing was forgotten long ago. It's a closed book, Doctor. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I thought, too. But things have happened lately that I think you two should know about. My friends, be patient and allow me to tell you a story. Although you already know part of the history, there are some things that you ignore. I think the best thing to do is to begin at the beginning. You both recall, do you not, that occasion years ago, five to be exact, when we held a convention on psychiatry in this city. I attended and gave a talk on the results of my studies related to the regression of a patient to a past life through the use of hypnosis. My theory was greeted with amazement and incredulity by the members of the convention. Among others attending that day were you, Dr. Esther, and you, Dr. Diaz. You both had come with Dr. Krupp, and my theory was made the subject of ridicule, and I left the convention bitter and defeated. I got to the house feeling unsure of these ideas. I'd been squelched, but I just couldn't accept the other opinions of my theories. I was sure they could be proven. That night, Flora offered to undergo a hypnotic test. She was fully aware of the danger of the experiment. Assisted by her father and by Pinkate, I hypnotized her. During her past life, Flora had lived among the great peoples of the Aztec. She told us such strange things, amazing things. Far back in those ancient years, her name had been Zochi. She was deeply in love with a brave and high-born warrior called Popoca. Their love was so strong that it would not answer to reason. So they decided to run away, even though it was her sacred duty to preserve her maidenhood and be sacrificed to the god Tecatlicopa. But they were discovered by the tribal priests. As punishment, the warrior was buried alive, and an eternal curse was placed upon him.
As for Zochi, she was adorned with a bracelet and a breastplate, which were engraved with hieroglyphics, indicating where the Aztec treasure was hidden. Then they cut out her heart, but as she began to regain consciousness, in the exact moment I came to the end of my little experiment, she struggled and began to shout. Laura had a terrible attack of some kind, and her blood pressure dropped to such an extent that we were afraid she might die. But a couple of weeks later, we discovered that Dr. Krupp, a man who had suddenly become a dangerous criminal in the underworld, had been there spying during my experiment. The experiment had been a complete success, but since we realized that no one would believe us unless we could come up with absolute proof we decided to search for the breastplate and the bracelet. Flora acted as our guide, and we discovered a hidden passageway beneath the pyramid of Teotihuacan. Professor, I think we're up against a dead end. It can't be possible. The Aztecs wouldn't build a secret passageway just to have it end up for no rhyme or reason. There must be some way through that wall. Professor, it sounds hollow. But it's so thick that it's senseless to try to break through. Hand me a hand, please. Flora, come on.
This must be a little room beneath the pyramid. Yes, but I know it isn't the temple. Look what I found! Come here! What is it? It looks like a well. Well, I think it's an air shaft, but undoubtedly it will lead us somewhere. Probably to the temple. Well then, what are we waiting for? Come on. After descending several flights of stairs, we suddenly encountered the hair-raising face of the god Ticatlicopa. We had reached the lower temple and the Aztec tomb that Flora had mentioned. And there we came across the skeleton of what had once been Xochitl. On the chest lay the solid gold breastplate. Sachi, this is horrible to think I was she. You know, we're the first persons to break in here. It's a world that slumbered all these years and begins to awaken now. We've found what we wanted so badly. No, Edward, don't do it. I'll be able to demonstrate this to my colleagues and prove my theory. It's simply amazing. Just a few days after I got the breastplate, I asked you all here, including Dr. Krupp, as you'll recall. Certainly. I'd say that it was the greatest experience of my life. And mine, too. You must also recall that I said that I'd study the breastplate and that I'd try to decipher the hieroglyphics and see what they meant. Since I knew that the message would tell how to find that hidden treasure. Yes, but I remember your telling us that you also needed the bracelet. Exactly, Doctor. One object complemented the other. Without the bracelet, it was simply impossible to decipher the code. So I decided to go back for it, in spite of the Aztec curse that surrounded it. He who defiles the tomb of the Aztecs and finds the sacred plate will run the risk of death in his family as well, until the breastplate is replaced I depended upon the help of my father-in-law and of my good friend, Dr. Pinkate. So once again, the three of us got together and returned to the tomb. When we reached there, and I was just about to pick up the bracelet, my father-in-law stumbled on something and called my attention to it. Look here. Look there, doesn't that grave belong to Popoca? Yes, according to the legend, it does. In that case, where is he now? We heard a strange shuffling noise that was coming in our direction. And then out of the darkness appeared the ghastly and terrifying Popoca. The Aztec warrior had come back to life. Come back to life to retrieve the objects that had been left in his care for eternity.
Let's put out the lights. I have an idea. I don't think he can stand it. Turn them on. Shine them in his face. Turn them off again. Lights again. You better run. I'll follow you. Frank, I thought my time had come. If it hadn't been for my friends, I'd have been torn to pieces. It's incredible. A mummy comes back to life after hundreds of years in a sepulcher. Dr. Diaz, you have my word of honor that the story I have been telling is the truth. Popolka, as I told you, was punished because he loved young Zochi. His curse was to guard the priceless bracelet as well as the golden breastplate. To do so for all eternity. Welcome back! What squeaked did you hear that? Well, 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 welcome back! That sounded better. What do you think, Jacques? Sound good? <laughs> hey, anyway, our line of defense, and Jacques said if I don't let him turn this on, he's going to have little mad assistant hissy fits. So I'm going to have it to let him. So, camera, camera dandy, can you uh, get a little close up? Let me know when you're there. Just give me the thumbs up from over there in camera land. Don't hit the button yet. Okay, we're good. Activate the robot, Jacques. I am a super fighter. Oh, there he goes. I think mean, super fighter needs some newer batteries. Uh oh. Shoot the camera, man! Oh, that's it. You want to finish the show? Can you turn it off? Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's in a little bit. Apparently, Super Fighter is going to need some new batteries before next week starts. I'll. Uh, I think they're. I think they go in the back here, but what do you think of that? That's a pretty good, uh... I built it myself. Yeah, Jacques built our early warning defense system, the Super Fighter. I like that his little chest plate has cartoons in it that spin. Maybe we'll get a close-up of that, that part later. So, Jacques, first part of the movie's over. What do you think so far? I told you it was a Mexican movie with a mommy and a robot. I don't like it. So, yeah, yeah, what part didn't you like? Um, all, of all of it, it. From the beginning to the middle to the whatever? Yeah. All right, well, you've got Jock's seal of disapproval. Go watch some more movie. Come back. You can bathe in the glory of my new haircut, and Jock will tell us more about what he doesn't like about <laughs> Robot versus the Aztec Mommy. Get out! Under this terrible curse, his poor soul would never find repose. Continue, Edward. Well, the bat on many occasions tried to steal these objects that I had found. Time passed rapidly. I thought the whole business had been forgotten. But I found that the Aztec curse still followed us. One night, the mummy came to this house to get his treasure pieces. And he kidnapped Flora. He tied her to the sacrificial stone where the skeleton of Xochi had lain for centuries and placed the bracelet and the breastplate on her. Obviously, the mummy intended to make history repeat itself. He was going to cut out Flora's heart and offer it to the god Tecatlicopa. The three of us rushed to the pyramid to try to rescue Flora. And we stood transfixed for a moment at the scene we saw. The mummy was standing next to the stone. He was holding a knife high in his right hand. I jumped to the floor and luckily was able to hit the blade with the bullet. It lunged at me, and its enormous hands got hold of my throat. Life was leaving me rapidly when Flora's father suddenly held a cross up in front of its face. With this, he was able to hold the mummy at bay while we freed Flora. In a frenzy, we untied her and got her away from the stone. 
And then the professor ordered us to get her out of the pyramid. His tone was so adamant and I was so concerned for Flora's safety that we obeyed him blindly. But when we got out, I realized that he hadn't followed us. And I decided to go back for him. In that very instant, a tremendous explosion shook the pyramid. The professor had given up his life in order to save ours. Since the mummy had stayed under tons of boulders and the bat had been sent to prison, of course, we thought the whole business had come to an end. But it didn't happen that way. The bat, who is really the infamous Dr. Krupp, Krupp, he broke out of jail. In his mad determination to get my treasure, he kidnapped my daughter and Flora and then hypnotized her. Do tell us the rest, my friend. Then what happened? In this state, she took the doctor to the Aztec tomb. He immediately located the mummy, taking the breastplate and the bracelet. Well, Krupp called me on the phone not too much later. I was ordered to go there and decipher the hieroglyphics to enable the demon to locate the treasure. And you agreed? Can't you see that I had to obey? To save my wife who had been kidnapped by the doctor and my little oh, girl. But there's another thing that you should know. It'll surprise you to hear that Krupp once said that he needed that Aztec treasure to work on an experiment. He also said that the experiment, of course, was costly. Now you know how I was forced to do it. I went to Krupp's laboratory and began to decipher the hieroglyphics. In the hands of those criminals, our lives were in grave danger. Our only hope was that the mummy, guided by unknown forces, would be able to find Dr. Krupp's hideout just the way he had found my house on a previous occasion. I dragged the thing out as much as possible, but the moment arrived when I could stall no longer. I finished it. That's fine. I hope you'll keep your promise now and set us all free, Doctor. Eh? Oh, yes. You know what to do now, don't you, Bruno? Just what are you going to do? Murderers? What do you think? You unscrupulous pig! were and settled accounts with them. Then when he saw the doctor trying to escape, he picked him up like a rag doll and threw him into a pit full of rattlers. Afterwards, with the breastplate and the bracelet in his hand, he slowly shuffled away into the darkness and soon was lost from sight. I'll never forget the strong affection I had for Flora's father. Such a kind man whose intelligent advice brought about our salvation. And the mummy went back to the pyramid? No. The explosion destroyed his temple. He had no reason to go there. In that case, can't you tell us where he is? Permit me to continue. All these tragic happenings couldn't go unattended. So I went to the police and they heard the whole story. Then I returned to Krupp's hideout, accompanied by the chief of police and a couple of his men. 
You can imagine our surprise when we discovered the place was completely empty. The laboratory had been dismantled, and the bodies of the criminals that the mummy had killed had also disappeared. Continuing our search, we hurried to the snake pit. I was awestruck when I realized that the body of Dr. Krupp was no longer down there. Then, to our horror, we discovered that there was a small door in the back wall of the pit through which the doctor could have escaped. Obviously, the doctor had escaped. And strangely, I don't think he'd been bitten. The man's running loose. So that would mean that the doctor kept trying to come by those articles so that he could locate the treasure. You're right, my friend. He did just that. He began to bother us a couple of weeks later. It happened quite suddenly, you see. One dark night. This is the house. Do you really think this plan of yours is going to work, Doc? You'll see. Now, I want you to be quiet. Keep still and don't make the slightest noise. Flora, it is my wish that you come to my side. Flora, I command you to come to me. Flora, I command you to come to me. Flora, are you listening? Come here to me. Not try to fight it, come here. Flora, do not try to fight it, come here. Are you listening? I command you to come to me. Laura, you are to do as I command. Come here. You can hear the waves that are being sent out by that mummy, can you not? I know well that you're able to lead us to him. Yes, I can. Then tell us, where is Popoka? In the ancient cemetery. Come with me. What are you doing here? Answer me! What are you doing here? 
come now, Flora. Come on, we must hurry. The place? Yes. You stinking devil. Oh, I'd like to chop your rotten flesh to pieces. It'll certainly be great to do so. But you know it's not possible now. We're going to make my experiment. So we must wait. Wait? Wait? When I got so much hate eating down deep inside of my guts, you ain't got no idea what it is to live like this. Hiding myself from everyone and everything just because of that stinking monster. Calm down now. <laughs> I promise you that he'll be destroyed. <laughs> but give me time. Just a little time. It won't be too long before you can have your revenge. Let me get the breastplate first, the bracelet. So near to them. And yet so far, because I can't touch them. It's too dangerous to do it. He'll wake up in an instant and destroy us. But I'll get him back. I swear it. No matter how long it takes me. You devilish mummy. Come on, we better go now. We'll be needing a lot of time if the plan I have is going to work out. Anything you say. Come, Flora. Now listen to me well, Flora. You'll go up to your room, and you'll go to sleep. And when you awaken, you'll act quite normally. And you won't recall a thing. Do you understand? You won't recall a thing. Now walk. Go on. Go on.
Well, good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. You must have been very tired. We were waiting down here to have breakfast with you. We could both eat a horse. Bacon and eggs, like always? Nothing for me, Maria. I have a terrible headache, dear. What's that you've got on your gown? It's all dirty. That's funny. You've been down in the cellar. No, sweetheart. I don't know. But look at your slippers. They're all muddy. Oh, come on. What have you been up to? Nothing. It's funny. These are new slippers. I just bought them. And now they're dirty. I think you went out last night. No. After I took my bath, I went to bed because I was tired. Yes, but you got up later on, didn't you? I did? No. Yes. Because I woke up a couple of times and you were not in bed. No, you're mistaken, darling. I assure you I didn't leave my bed for a second. You went out last night, honest, Mom. Come on, let's forget the whole thing for now, all right? Remember, she has a great imagination. Tell me, has your headache passed? No. I'm going to lie down for a while. Excuse me, please. You children go out and have your breakfast. Yes, Daddy. Come on, Piquet, I want to talk to you. Oh, boy, what a liar you are. You shut your big mouth, you're the liar. Piquet, I'm very worried. This attitude that we've observed in Flora is not normal. What's more, I'm afraid that the bat has something to do with this. Then you really think that child was telling the truth about it? And that her mother got up and went out? Yes. Quite probable. But Flora insisted she didn't leave her bed for a second. Because she can't recall anything. When she got up last night, she was sleeping. I don't understand it. It seems impossible. I'll tell you what I think. She was hypnotized and could be under post-hypnotic suggestion. So it seems to me that the bat controls her from a distance. It's logical. This strange attitude with Flora indicated that unscrupulous villain Krupp made her leave the house during the night. But where did they go to? Can't you guess what he's trying to do? You certainly know what he's after, the breastplate. And besides that, the bracelet. Precisely, Pinkate. Then you think that she was made to go along with Krupp, and he wanted her to guide him to find the mummy. Exactly, and you and I must go there. I'm going to find out if that scoundrel stole those objects. But that'll be difficult. You can't investigate without any clues. Yes. Listen to me a second. Suppose we took her slippers to the laboratory to have that mud analyzed. That could help us, don't you think? Yes, yes, that might just be the solution. We'll take them, but I don't think she should find out. We'd better do it all in secret. Come on. Yes, now I'm quite sure it's embedded in the dirt. Of course, it's a small quantity, Doctor, but your suspicions are correct. They're pieces of marble. You're sure it's marble? Can you identify its source? Is it a special kind? No, it isn't, but it's a fine quality. It might be a Karar marble, I can say that. It's used in the construction of mausoleums, as far as I know. Thank you. This is the last cemetery. We've seen all the others. If we don't find anything here, we'd better forget about it. Hello there. Good evening. Tell me, are you the watchman here? Yes, sir. Anything I can do for you? Oh, yes. We'd like to ask you a few questions. We'd like to know if you've seen anything strange the last few weeks or more recently. Anything very suspicious in or around the cemetery pertaining to one of the graves. Are you from the police? Yes, that's right, my friend. And we're after a very dangerous criminal, whom we suspect has been hiding in one of the cemeteries around the city. Well, the fact is, something pretty doggone curious did happen. Just two nights ago, I was surprised to run into a young woman here wearing a kind of white robe. She seemed to be asleep, and two men entered the grounds with her. And when I asked them who they were, one of the guys slugged me, and they left me out cold here on the ground. Then we'll be taking a look around the grounds. 
You can do anything you want. Anything you want. You see? I was right. At last, we're on the trail. Now, the tough part is yet to come, because we've got to walk around till we find the mummy. Look, we'd better separate now. Go that way, Pinkate. I'll go over there. Go on. They're still, hey, 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 now watch it. Gotta be able to show the trademark goggles at all times. Who knows? We might get picked up by a network. Speaking of which, apparently, soon, Baron Morbid and Jacques in the basement of Baron Morbid will be shown on, uh, what's the name of that thing? Underground TV. Underground TV at Free Underground Network. Freeunderground.com, I think. I'll find out the actual thing. We'll put it at the end. Diggy, 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 in the titles, you find out what it is. And as always, it's time to go to our bit. The foot. The foot, the part where I get, uh, do you want to make obnoxious noises with squeakers? I'll let you. Uh, and we're going to see if our foot, after another week of being in the dank dark. Hey, maybe I can pick it up with this. No, no. <laughs> uh, get it for me. Ooh, you want to see something neat? Watch this, watch this. We'll put it in there as far as it'll go, right? Mm -hmm. Ready? Watch this cam. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't move. Okay, ready? Woo! That was awesome. Anyway, let's see how the foot's going. Drum roll for you out there who own drums. I think the foot is exactly the same. We might have to call this a wash. A washed experiment. What do you think? Yeah, this experiment kind of sucks. Yeah, I think we'll have to come up with... We'll go to the dollar store and see if they have any other things. This is truly as big as this foot's going to get. So I think we're going to just drop it back in there. Still no floppies. All right, get back squeakers before you make yourself deaf. Squeakers, stop yelling it, Jacques. You stay right there. I will towel off with my mad scientist robe. Yeah. Coat, whatever. Yeah. Come on, I've never washed this thing. Can't wash it. Gotta keep my heart alive. Oh, all right. I'll put I'll put a foot in there then. What do you think? Okay. Foot fit. Foot fit. Fit foot. Yeah, sure. Not really. Oh Lord, you have a mini skull. Charge you the mini skull for the heart. Give to me, Jacques. You know you want the mini skull. You can throw it at people. It'll hit them in the head. It'll be more fun. Okay. Give there me you that. go. Don't throw it at the camera person. <laughs> See, I knew where you were going. All right. You got one last bit. Trade one back. last part. Well, uh, we'll trade back during the break. One last thing of Robot vs. Aztec Mummy. Get out! What happened? Look. Come on.
Look, the breastplate and the bracelet. They didn't take it. All this I've just told you occurred almost five years ago. We visited the crypt from time to time to take a look at the mummy with its breastplate and its bracelet, too. And the bat, is he still around? You know, he disappeared from sight. Then, just a couple of days ago, we read an article that is very interesting. We were profoundly surprised by it. According to the article, a couple of nights before, a cadaver had been robbed from the amphitheater. And the individual who did it was the bat, of course. Yes. In the beginning, we had some doubts since the man who had been attacked couldn't offer us a description of his assailants. But later on, our suspicions were confirmed. Yesterday, there was a burglary in the Radiology Institute. The thieves took a machine that uses radium. They also stole a brain out of a laboratory. This time, the police were able to identify the crooks as the bat and all his band. As a matter of fact, they were almost captured. Are there any good clues, Doctor? Lead is the only metal capable of resisting radiation. Lead material in this city is handled by many wholesalers. After visiting the first three or four... Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. What can I do for you, gentlemen? We're sorry to be a bother to you, but is it just possible that lately... You sent out a large shipment of lead. Could you give me that information? In the last two days? Or it could be a week, more or less. Well, let me check. We keep a record of our shipments in this book. Yes, here it is. Exactly five days ago, we made delivery of 20 plates of lead shielding four inches in width to number 22 Shade Street. Many thanks. You're welcome. After investigating for days, at last we got the address. I think that Bat had made his hideout there, or his laboratory. Well, I don't see why this thieving Dr. Krupp would go to the effort of stealing radium, a complete human brain, and also the body of some man. Do you recall that the Bat once told Flora that he was working on a new experiment? I think that is the explanation. It's possible. But there's no doubt that Dr. Krupp and his criminals are planning to cause trouble. Certainly, that's also my opinion. Now, I'll tell you why I called you here tonight, gentlemen, because you both are scientists, and you'll be able to combat the situation, just in case we end up being murdered. You mean to say you two are thinking of going there without taking the police along? Yes, because you see, we're still not sure that that's the Bat's laboratory. And the police still don't have much faith in us because of what happened before. Flora, in case we're not back here at the house by three in the morning, I'm leaving it up to you to call the police. Edward! Freeze, you two. Dr. Armada. What a pleasant surprise. Bruno? A souvenir of the mummy. The boss is going to be very happy to say hello to you two again. Come along. out in front. Dr. Amada and his shadow. This is a pleasant surprise, gentlemen. After such a long time, I come face to face with such good friends. Exactly where did you find them? Out in the shop there, looking around. I offer you my congratulations, because you are magnificent detectives. 
Did anyone else come with them? Nobody else. I saw them when they drew up in the automobile, alone. Bruno, aren't you going to attend our guests? The way they deserve? Go fetch chairs for the gentlemen. Sure, right away. Tell me, how's your beautiful and charming wife, Dr. Amada? I learned about your marriage, and I admit it's a bit late to say it, but receive my congratulations. I'm Pinky. How are you these days? Are you still the champion of right? There's no doubt about it, and I'm glad. Come over here. Who would have thought that you'd be here at the moment to witness this? Because you're about to see something that will astonish you. Truly unbelievable. <laughs> when you feast your eyes on this, I don't doubt that you'll be amazed, Doctor. And you'll be the first to congratulate me. Frankly, I'm happy that you came here to visit us, Dr. Amato. You're a man who is basically an intellectual, and that's why you'll be able to understand the greatness of my invention. I think you remember that time we met. Since then, I've worked day and night without resting for a minute. And during all that hectic time, I explored powers that no one else knows. All those great mysteries, the very basis of creation. Then that means that you defy all the limits that were put down by God. There are certain secrets that we could explore and discover rapidly. And that's why it's such a shame that fear impedes us so. Dr. Amada. You're completely mad and ignorant also. <laughs> Don't you respect research at all? Don't you want to learn to know why a body functions? I do. And at last I found the cause. Take a look at this heart that's beating. It lives. It lives and pulsates because I gave it life. And if I can give life to inert material, why can't I give it to the bodies that are damned to death and decay? No one can possibly imagine how I worked. When I dug in the mud with these hands and entered tombs, I tortured many animals with pleasure to find the answers, answers to man's existence. You're insane, do you know? I decided to create a man, a breathing body, a real man. And I have made that dream come true. There you have the greatest creation of man's intelligence. A human robot, Doctor. Tonight I'm going to find out. Tonight I'm going to put it to the supreme test. I'll activate the creature. But this is monstrous, Doctor. If it lives, then my triumph will be complete, Dr. Amara. Because I'll get the treasure, and I'll be rich. This thing I created has enormous power. And you'll watch it. Now then, life for the robot. Doctor, watch this. already. Don't you think it would be better to call the police now? I don't know what to do. No. Let's all wait till 3 a.m. and respect the doctor's wishes. Suppose they're in danger.
the greatest invention! <laughs> You can see it standing there. A marvelous machine, a tribute to the great intelligence of man. A human robot. With this shining creature, no human being on this earth can oppose me. Do you understand? Do you know what could have happened to you right now? Had I not diminished the electric force, the current that makes him move, and that is contained in this apparatus? With the slightest twist of this dial, you two would have been converted into atomic dust instantaneously. Because the robot utilizes radium and has sufficient power to disintegrate anything in the world. To right. It meets the mummy. Bruno, prepare the special plates. The lead will shield my truck. Hurry, time is flying. Tonight, my robot has to make a visit, you know. In a certain cemetery. What time is it? Ten minutes to three. I told you there's no time to lose, Bruno. Hurry, get going! <laughs> I want the police. It's urgent. Headquarters, I want to talk to the chief of police. I want you to stop and think about this. A new kind of world. An army of robots obeying me. <laughs> the human species. Sheep obeying my orders. A new theory that man has not dared imagine. I'll make some more. Maybe a thousand. Now that I know how, the rest is easy. But for that, I need money. The treasure of the Aztecs! That's why tonight the mummy will give me what I want! Boss, it's all set. Fine. You two will stay here and guard our distinguished friends. They mustn't get away. They're an extremely important cog in my plan. I'm sorry that I can't take you along, but you'd only get underfoot. But I'll return, gentlemen, to inform you that I could destroy the mummy. And with the gold breastplate and bracelet in my hands, you'll begin once more to translate the hieroglyphics. <laughs> this time you're helpless, because no one knows you're here. Dr. Amara. Let's hurry, I'm afraid for their lives.
happened here? Chief, you can arrest those two men there in the other room. Come on. Doctor, the bat has gone to the tomb where the mummy is. Let's hurry. There's no time to lose. What's that? Hurry, Bruno! Take the breastplate and bracelet off of him! Yes. At last, you devil. At last, I'm gonna have my revenge. Papoka, in memory of the great love that once existed between us, stop all this death and destruction. Take these objects that are yours to guard and go back to the grave of our ancestors, where we should never have interrupted your eternal sleep.
You're gonna throw that to camera, camera dandy, aren't you? Yeah. All right. If we were in 3D, <laughs> that would have looked awesome. But unfortunately, we will we will never be in 3D. So here we go. You, you want to try the eyeball? Sure. It's a little soggy. Something yeah. got spilled on the table. I'm I'm thinking the foot might be leaking. No, it's the pipes. Pipes in the basement. Pipes in the basement of Bear Morbid. All right, here you go. Remember, the camera's an expensive piece of equipment. If you hadn't noticed, by the way, behind Cameron Andy, yeah, that's uh, what we like to call uh, an incredibly large drum kit. Yes. Not ours. Not ours. There's a band that practices down in the basement of Bear and Morbid. We, we rent out the space to them, don't we? Yeah. 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 So, anyways. Keep tuned on for uh, more more wacky basement of Baron Morbid stuff. Um, keep tuned on. We're gonna keep updates on the uh, in action figure. You saw that all last week. Maybe I'll shoot a little quickie commercial. We'll put in every episode, and people can order it. How much did we say it's gonna be? Nine ninety nine. Yes. Or was it ten dollars? Ten dollars. Ten dollars for in action figure. What a bargain! Your movie tonight was Robot versus the Aztec Mummy. Another example of classic Mexican cinema. Beloved by Jacques every time we show something from Mexico. Jacques pretty much goes into a rage. So we'll be sure to show another one next week. Maybe we'll show the Brainiac. I don't think we've shown, maybe we'll show the Brainiac. <laughs> See, see how much he loves the movies. All right, any last words for the fans? Look right out there, Jacques, and give them the last word from Jacques for the week. Well, the live cat's down here. That's really what you want to go out with? A lab cast down here? What? A lab cast well, I mean, down here? Do you here. have any famous words for the, the words of wisdom of Jacques Strop for the studio audience to hold near and dear to their hearts for the last week, for this last week? Um. For this next week, I mean. Sorry, folks. He's deep in thought. We have to let him go. Go ahead. Dragons. Dragons! Shock's been playing a lot of Skyrim. That'll do it. You might be hearing the lab cat. She's relatively camera dandy is picking up the lab cat and putting her on the amplifier. Is that what that is? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, as always, I am your host, Barry Morbid. My lovely lab assistant, Jacques Strop. We are here in the basement of Barry Morbid. 